Hello, I'm Jennifer McGrath. Think to yourself, when was the last time you had a good night's sleep and woke up feeling really, truly rested? What disrupts our ability to get a good night's sleep? If you're like most others, your schedule looks like this. You have competing demands for time, chaotic work schedules, and mounting deadlines. We live in a society that does not value sleep and often deems it to be an unproductive waste of time. Tonight, I'm here to talk to you about how sleep disruption is ruining your health. My interest in sleep and health came about in a roundabout way. My interest has long been interested in examining the links between stress, poverty, and child health. And I've been keen to understand what it is about stress and the stress of being poor that makes poorer people have poorer health. Now, as a good scientist, I'm trained to value the importance of doing experiments to delineate cause and effect, but no one's going to sign up for a study that randomizes them to either being stressed or having, being poor. <laughs> so I turned to some colleagues that work with mice, and I was very intrigued to learn that they can use sleep disruption as a reliable way to elicit stress in these animals. And that really piqued my curiosity, and it led to the question of whether sleep disruption may be the mechanism by which stress and poverty get under the skin to adversely influence health. We spend one third of our lives sleeping. Our sleep needs vary across the lifespan. How much sleep do you need? Well, school-age children need nine to 11 hours each night, teens about eight to 10 hours, and adults should sleep seven to nine hours. All organisms sleep. Scientists recently found compelling evidence that you don't even need a brain to sleep. <laughs> Jellyfish are now the simplest animals known to sleep, and this tantalizing discovery is just the sort of thing that keeps inquiring minds of scientists up at night. So why do we need to sleep? Well, sleep affects how you look, how you feel, how you perform on a daily basis. And we need a night of uninterrupted sleep to leave our bodies and our minds feeling rejuvenated. Throughout the night, our sleep architecture cycles through a pattern of alternating REM and non-REM sleep. And as we sleep, our brains recharge, our memory is consolidated. During deep restorative sleep, it's the time for tissue growth and muscle repair. This year's Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine was awarded to the three scientists who discovered the inner workings of the biological clock that helps us anticipate and adapt to the regular rhythm of the day. For most people, our daily biological clock is 24.2 hours. Free-running experiments in caves with no light cues demonstrate that we have a natural tendency to go to bed 12 minutes later each night. This means that after five nights, we would go to bed one hour later. To keep our body aligned with the world around us, we entrain our circadian rhythm using light cues. And this entrainment allows our daily biological rhythms to remain synchronized. Rhythmicity is key. Imagine an orchestra. The sounds of musical instruments come together for a beautiful symphony. When the timing of the sounds are out of rhythm, dyssynchrony happens. And the same thing happens when our body circadian rhythms are disrupted and become misaligned. Researchers have known for some time that short sleep duration, or sleeping too few hours, is bad for health. But new evidence suggests the link is less about the amount of sleep and more about the quality and the timing of sleep. Disrupted circadian rhythms lead to heart attacks, high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, some cancers, and even death. In childhood, sleep disruptions are linked to obesity, inflammation, and learning problems. As a society, most of us are not sleeping within our normal sleep window. Our body no longer receives reliable cues to sync our internal clocks to the external environment. Our 24-7 society is disrupting our circadian clock and making our brains lose rhythm, leading to social jet lag. Curiously, social jet lag is most pronounced during adolescence. More than half of adolescents age 15 and older go to bed after 1 a.m. And to compensate for the sleep debt accumulated over the school week, they sleep in on the weekends. Consider, if a teen goes to bed at 1 a.m. on Friday and sleeps until 11 a.m. the next day on Saturday, this causes a phase delay in their circadian rhythm. 
Shifting back to an earlier wake time for school on Monday morning requires several days before their circadian rhythm realigns. This shift in sleep is like traveling across several time zones every weekend. Delayed phase shift during adolescence has been consistently observed across mammals from mice to monkeys. And these sleep changes are partly attributed to puberty, but they're exacerbated by modern society. We are sleeping less than previous generations. In the last four decades, we have lost 25% of precious sleep time. Our activity no longer coincides with daylight hours. Meal times are later, and we are constantly exposed to bright light. Most teenagers and adults have television or computer or other technology in their bedroom. Bedrooms are glowing in the blue light from smartphones and tablets. Nighttime exposure to blue light disrupts our sleep and misaligns our circadian rhythm. Noise disturbances near your home not only reduce the value of your property, but they also interfere with your sleep. Other disruptors include exposure to artificial light, stress, consumption to caffeine, and irregular sleep patterns. Thus, our neighborhoods and our social environment get into our bedrooms and into our heads at night, and they lead to microarousals or intrusions in our sleep. Today, gadgets and wearable technology make it possible for us to be aware of and monitor our sleep disruptions. Every vertical line that's depicted here indicates a microarousal or awakening during the night. Repeated nights of interrupted, fragmented sleep have a cumulative impact leading to sleep debt. It's possible to estimate the sleep debt of society. The Van Winkle sleep debt clock features a running tabulation of the sleep debt accrued by Americans. It quantifies the rest deficit, or the difference between the amount of sleep people should be getting and the hours that are actually being slept. Sleep disturbances also have a larger economic impact to society. The RAND Institute investigated five OECD countries and calculated the economic costs of insufficient sleep at the population level, attributable to driving accidents, work productivity lost, and days lost per year. The economic cost is $21.4 billion per year in Canada alone. Small changes to sleep could have a big impact on our economy. Consider increasing quality sleep by one hour per day could add $12 billion to the Canadian economy. How can we offset sleep disruptions and promote better quality sleep? For youth, there are three recommendations. First, have consistent bedtimes and wake times, going to bed and waking up at the same time on school days and weekends. Second, get electronics out of the bedroom. Third, go to bed by 9 p.m. For teenagers, there's also a policy recommendation for later school start times. These recommendations are largely consistent for you. If sleep takes up a third of our lives, it's essential to prioritize sleep as it plays a direct role in how full and energetic and successful the other two thirds of our lives can be. So I leave you tonight with a challenge. What can you do to decrease disruptions and increase your quality sleep by one hour each day? Thank you.